Hi, my name is Marcia Skripik and I'm a children's author. One of the books that I wrote is called Enough. It's a picture book and it's set in Ukraine. It's set in the past, actually in 1933, which seems to be a very long time ago. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Ukraine and especially in 1933. Ukraine, the name itself, Ukraina, Ukraine, some people say means borderland. And for sure, Ukraine bordered two very important areas of the world. On the west was Western Europe, and on to the east was Russia. And so um, it was always a question of whether Ukraine was part of the west or part of the east. Russia, and for a long time, Russia was the Soviet Union, which was a communist dictatorship. So that means if it's a dictatorship, it means that the leader is not voted in, just takes takes the leadership of a country as a big bully. Um, so while the Soviet Union existed, uh, the Soviet Union felt that Ukraine should not exist as its own country and wanted to take Ukraine over. And 1933 was a particularly bad year for Ukraine because uh, Ukrainians believed that they existed as people uh, they also uh, were religious. They had many different religions. Some were Jewish, some were uh, Catholic, some were um, Christian Orthodox, some were Muslim, but they liked their religions. But um, the Soviet Union felt that people shouldn't have religions, that they should be atheist. Um, Ukrainians also liked to own their own property, and the Soviet Union felt that people should not own their own property. So there was a problem between the two um, thoughts of how people should exist. And so what the Soviet Union did, because they were really annoyed with people um, who lived in Soviet Ukraine, was they decided to take their food away. Uh, this sounds pretty drastic, but what they did was they put soldiers all the way around the territory of Ukraine. And then they uh, took away the food. They took away the grain that had been growing there, but they even took loaves of bread out of the uh, ovens as they were cooking. And basically it became uh, a criminal act to be caught, even holding a couple sheaves of wheat. And so because of this, millions of people uh, died in Ukraine. And this was actually what the Soviet Union wanted because they wanted the land, but they didn't want the people. And then, so after millions died, they tried repopulating the area with people who believed their own ideology of communism. And then they said that the, the, this famine, the starvation never happened. Now that starvation is called holodomor, holod, holodomor. So holod means hunger, more means death. So death by hunger. Well, that's what I wrote a picture book about. You'd think that that's a pretty big topic, but I just decided that I wanted to concentrate on what it would be like for one girl and her father to live during this time and whether there is any way that they could fight back. So I wrote about uh, Marussia and her father and how they tricked the dictator into thinking that everyone in their village was dead but really they were alive and they had hidden their food on him and um, so you can see on here that there's this stork and there's this little girl and she's on the back of the stork and this picture shows her actually flying to Canada to a land of plenty to pick up some grain to take back to her village. Now, of course, that didn't happen, but um, it represents something that happened because during the whole of Demor, people in Canada tried to send food to Ukraine, but Stalin, the dictator, just sold it. So he didn't give it to the people who were starving because he actually wanted them to starve. Um, but there's also this old folk tale. It's an old Ukrainian folk tale about um, a, a village person who gets onto the back of a stork and flies to a place of plenty and actually brings back gold coins. But in my story, I make it grain. Um, but basically what my story is about is how they do trick the dictator. Uh, so the villagers manage to hide their grain in graves. There they are, they're burying the grain. And they run out of sacks, so they have to use the men's pants and shirts and the women's head coverings and everything. And so then when the dictator comes to inspect, the dictator is shocked because he sees little bits of clothing coming out from the ground. And so what he says to them, and like everybody's hidden in the village, and so it's just Marusia standing there, and she's so afraid that he's going to realize that they've 
hidden their grain in the graves, but all he sees is a bit of cloth. And because he's very arrogant and prejudiced too against Ukrainians, and he looks at that cloth and he says, are you people so backward that you bury your dead without coffins? So Marussia was really happy that he misunderstood what was going on. And he just thought that they were a bunch of um, you know, backward people that could never do anything or even so backward that they don't use coffins. Um, and so, she, but she played along because sometimes when you're with a bully, that's the best thing. So she bowed to him and she said, yes, sir, you're, you're right. That's what we did. We we're so stupid that we bury our dead without coffins. And he said, right, you are. And he just dusted the dirt off of his hands and he got back onto his dictator horse and he rode away never realizing that he had been tricked and after everybody um, after he left everybody came out of their hiding places and they were very very happy because they had tricked the dictator and that one village was able to have um, grain to eat now that didn't happen but there were a couple villages that um, people did survive in and the way that they were able to survive was by taking um, things and selling them, like so a wedding ring. Maybe their mother died or their father died and they took the wedding ring and they would take it into the city and they would sell that and that would bring them enough food to buy a little bit of grain to survive. But um, when this book came out, it got a lot of people very angry because this was a, a historical event that was supposed to have been successfully hidden. It hadn't been written about, people said it didn't happen. And here I was making fun of someone as important as Stalin, who was like, a, he was a dictator. Um, he was as notorious as Hitler. He had killed as many people as Hitler. And here I was making fun of him. And so people actually threatened to kill me. I got letters in the mail. I got threatening phone calls. Um, people saying that they were going to kill me because I did such an insulting thing. So whenever I was in public doing a public event with this picture book enough, I had to have police with me. It was scary. Uh, also at that time, Ukraine itself was not a free country. But a few years after the book came out, Ukraine went through what was called the Orange Revolution. So people uh, marched out onto the streets and they demanded freedom. They demanded not to have a dictatorship anymore. And it worked and they were able to elect uh, their first freely elected pr president and his name was Viktor Yushchenko. And um, Putin, who was the current dictator bully of Russia, was the dictator bully of Russia at that time too and actually tried to poison Viktor Yushchenko but um, Yushchenko survived even though he was horribly um, scarred for life and in a lot of pain. Um, and Viktor Yushchenko, President Yushchenko, once he was elected, he talked about the Holodomor in public and recognized it even though this made uh, people in Russia very angry. And he heard about my book, which was also published in Ukrainian and used in Ukraine to educate people there about the Holodomor. And so he came to Canada in 2008. I'm Canadian. And I got an invitation to meet him in person, which was really kind of cool. And so I did meet him in person. Here's a picture of that. There's Viktor Yushchenko, and that's me in 2008. And he's pinning this award onto my lapel. And what that award is, is this. It's the, it's really pretty, isn't it? It's a very girly award. It's called the Order of uh, Princess Olha. And Princess Olha in medieval times was a warrior princess who defended freedom for Ukraine. And so I got this award and it's sort of like he made me a princess. He didn't really, but I like to think that I'm a princess now. And so if you ever see me and you don't know how to pronounce Marcia Skripik, because I know that that's a hard name to pronounce, but you just see me walking in the street or whatever and you want to get my attention, all you have to do is say, hello, Princess Marcia over here. I'd love to say hello to you. So um, if you see, if you're more interested in reading the book, I would... Um, suggest that you see if you can get it from the library or your bookstore. And um, I hope that you enjoy hearing about all the different countries um, of the alphabet 
and thanks so much.